global porn hacks expose darker side of Israel's startup nation image. Jerusalem, CNN, Audios, Audacious Mossad spy operations around the world. The plucky startup nation home to reams of billion dollar ideas. There are two drivers of Israel's image abroad that each political and business leaders have long been happy to push. That slick image appears to have taken a hit with new report that once again, once again, Israel founded technology like a Pegasus software from the form NSO has been used by government around the world to allegedly hack the cell phones of human rights activists, journalists, and others. NSO and its defenders say its software is mean, meant only to catch terrorists and other criminals, saying it regularly saves the lives and operates under strict export controls. The company say, says it doesn't control what its clients do with the software but follows the Israel laws on exporting military grade technology is selective, selective on inviting its customers and cuts off access if it discovers misuse. But the recent revelations by the International Consortium of Media and Human Rights Groups about Pegasus have thrown the spotlight back on both the company and Israel. Now, as many con consider the morality and legality of such programs, there are calls for from both inside Israel as well as in the international community about the how better to regulate the cyber espionage market. The perfect marriage of spycraft and technology. Israel's dominance in the cyber security field did not occur in a vacuum. The country's intelligence and the co covert operations divisions, especially each Mossad security force, have long had a tourist reputation for engaging in corny, daring, and ruthless espionage, burnished by Hollywood depictions. As Israel's prominent prominence as a hub of technological innovation and the startup grew, the two areas converged to give the tiny countries an outsized influence in the cybersecurity industry. The country's well-resourced education system plus the compulsory military service brings scores of young Israelis into high-level training in cybersecurity and the cyber warfare before many of them even go to university, according to the Tar Pavel, head of cybersecurity studies at the Academy Co College of Tel Aviv, Yato. Much of the country's most cutting-edge technology has its root in military development, Pavel noted. One of the most elite units of the Israel Defense Forces is the Secretive Unit 8200, the cyber spy agency that has produced some of the country's biggest tech superstars. One of the unique things in Israel is the cyber, uh, cyber synergy, the bringing together of cyber and synergy with the industries. Pi Pavel told the CNN before alluding to the characteristic he says is perhaps rooted in the Israel psyche. There is also something here. Maybe there is also the struggle to survive if everything is happy and you are not constantly trying to survive against the people trying to destroy you. You don't have to re-innovate to cope. And it's so all fallout. NSO was founded in 2009, but it wasn't till 2016 that the power of NSO's technology came under scrutiny. It was in that year that reports emerged that the Emirati human rights activist Ahmed Mansour 
It received suspicious text messages with links that the researchers at Citizen Lab in the University of Toronto revealed co contained the malware of NSO that would have hacked his iPhone. In 2018, Mansour was sentenced to 10 years in prison for damaging the reputation of the e UAE on social media. Pegasus Software was also allegedly connected to the 2018 murder of Washington Post columnist Jamel Khashoggi via fellow dis dissident Omar Abdulaziz, whose phone was allegedly hacked through Pegasus Software. Abdulaziz sued the NSO in 2019 accusing the company of violating international law by selling the software to oppressive reg regimes. Only last year, an Israel judge rejected the NSO's request to dismiss the lawsuit, which NSO had urged was lacking good faith, faith according to The Guardian. NSO has repeatedly denied each software was used to monitor Kasogi or his family. The recent investigation, investigation by the International Media and Human Rights Consortium found the evidence of Pegasus software on 70, 37 phones belonging to people who, based on the company's own description of the software's purpose, shouldn't have been targeted target of NSO software like journalist and human rights activist. CNN has not independently verified the finding of that investigation named the Pegasus Project which was or or organized by Forbidden Stories. In a statement to CNN, NSO strongly denied it the investigation's findings saying it found fault with many of its assertions assertions. As a result, countries like France have announced the probe into the use of the technology while Amazon announced that they had shut down the relevant infrastructure and account links to the NSO that used the Amazon services. Tip of the iceberg. NSO is simply one part of the vast investment industry of cyber espionage, according to Israel Bachel, a strategy and communications consultant who has worked with many of Israel's top political leaders, including former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and current De Deputy Prime Minister and Defense Minister Benny Gantz. Let's be honest, intelligence is being gathered by states against each other constantly. Everyone spies on everyone. And when it comes to the Israel company, there is a lot of uh, hypo hypocrisy, Bachel say, said, pointing to previous revelations revelation revelations about the US National Security Agency spying on world leaders and each own citizens. NSO is another tool, but there are many other tools. Beyond each actual cap capabilities, companies like NSO also help Israel diplomatically. Bachel said, as Israel has for years quietly and now publicly cultivated relationships with former advisories. One of the tools that Israel used diplomatically is its ability in intelligence. It's not a secret that Israel is sharing sensitive intelligence even with Arab countries because we have an interest in protecting them, Bachel said. But Professor Yuval Shalni, chair of the Public Intelligence Law Department of Hebrew University of Jerusalem, say the tactic is starting to backfire on Israel's image. The logic is Israel may be willing to turn a blind eye, blind eye to transactions that are conducted with friendly regimes in the sense that they were friendly to Israel but not necessarily friendly to human rights, Shani said.
I think this recent scandal, which is quite embarrassing, embarrassing for the for NSO, but also for Israel, would lead at least in the short run to some tightening of the export control standard. How to control the uncontrollable? Unlike conver conventional weapons, software is often intangible and can easily be sold and transferred across the globe, making attempts to control technology like the Pegasus system difficult. NSO and similar military-grade technology is regulated by an export control structure within Israel's Ministry of Defense, Shani said. This system looks both at the technology and the target to which entity, either state or non-state, is purchasing this technology, including its human rights record, he added. But Shani said, looking at the allegations around the NSO's Pegasus software, the results are not impressive, it's quite concerning. In response to the most recent allegations around the NSO technology, Israel Defense Minister Benny Gantz said they are studying the claims, while an inter interministerial team has been appointed to look into current process and whether Israel-made technology was being misused abroad, according to the Reuters. A quite fixed, Shani said, would be for Israel to formally sign on to the Weinsener was arrangement between 42 countries which try to bring transparency to the export of military and dual use technology and attempts to prevent such technology from being acquired by dangerous elements. Shani said Israel currently adheres to the agreement but is not a former member. But the most important reforms to help controlling such technology will come from within, said Karin Nahon, a professor at the interdisciplinary this inter this Center Herzliya and President of the Israel Internet Association. If Israel doesn't export it, it's it, someone else would. Someone else would. If you don't give these engineers and startup licenses and provide a, ki a kind of supervision, nothing stops them from moving to another country and selling it from there, she said. Nahon is calling for the ethical consideration and the possibility such technology will be exploited to become a more significant part of an export decision. And she suggested the companies should place more limitations on the software's use and have more oversight into how their clients are using the software, something NSO says it has little control over. NSO does not operate the system and has no visibility to the data. The company said in a statement last week saying it, it saying it will continue to investigate all cre credible claims of misuse and take appropriate action based on the result of such investigation. It makes it more complicated in terms of the responsibility of these companies and Israel's, but on the other hand, it might minimize the number of countries this software is being exported to, Nahon said. Even though it may seem like NSO and Israel's image is being dragged through the mud for its connection to such alarming surveillance, Bakchel Bechel said overall it could have a pos positive effect for those who want to continue burnishing Israel as a leader in advanced technology and intelligence operations. I think sometimes people come to curse and the outcome is there is a blessing because of what happens at the end of the day, people remember that the best technology is Israel technology, NSO Bechtel said. That's what people 
three months from now will remember.